Hello everybody and welcome back to another video. Today it is my mid-season madness primer video. Basically the point of this video is I am going to go through all of the teams playing in the mid-season madness tournament next week and explaining all of the kind of things to know about these teams, what to expect from these teams going into the tournament, uh, without giving too much away in terms of what I think will happen in terms of how these teams will perform. Definitely more of a let's just talk about these teams, highlight their strengths or weaknesses, players to watch, how, what they've done so far this season, and kind of roll with it that way. So that is going to be what this video is. If you enjoy this video and more videos kind of like it in the future for other future tournaments, um, or whatnot, let me know in the comments down below. But without further ado, let's jump in and start with the number one seed in the tournament, the San Francisco Shock. Now, this Shock roster come into this tournament with the best record in the league, sitting at a very, very nice 12-0 record. They, however, did not have the greatest performance in the kickoff clash that began uh, this season, the first tournament of the season. Uh, finishing fourth place overall. But with a 12-0 record, they still managed to have uh, the overall number one seed heading into this tournament. Definitely uh, a team that should be looked at as one of the top teams in this tournament. A lot of fantastic players on this roster um, and players who are definitely some of the top level uh, competitors. Proper, of course, in the DPS line is probably star number one. Um, but this roster is full of them. Uh, the tank duo of Mikey and uh, Kaluj have been playing exceptionally well so far this season. Uh, and of course, Violet and Kilo in that support line doing very, very well as well. So definitely a team that I think is going to be pretty good. One of the things I think that they will struggle with more than some of the other teams um, is I don't think they necessarily have the most elite talent in the region. Uh, with the addition of Mikey, they definitely rounded out some of their weaknesses from the kickoff clash, which was the tank flexibility. Kaluj is a good player. He's just not a, a kind of flexible, can play everything type of player, which is a, a, a trend pretty common in the league. Mikey definitely helps them shore up a lot of those weaknesses that they had previously. And I think that this team is definitely one of the top level teams going into this tournament. But I don't necessarily think that they have the experience, of course, that some of these other teams that have been um, at the kind of top of the region and top of the season, uh, you know, between the, the Western and Eastern region. Some of those top level teams have a lot more veteran presence and a lot more experience doing well in these tournaments. The Shock do not. And I will be curious to see kind of how this team performs when they have to play a lot of games back to back to back. That to me was kind of the thing that I think ultimately hurt this team in the previous tournament. And I'm curious to see kind of what happens with them this time around. But I definitely think they're still a very good team. Definitely one of those top-level competitors. Um, going in as number one seed is, of course, a very big benefit as they get to pick their opponent uh, on the second day. So certainly a team to watch for uh, as one of the top teams right now. The number two seed in the tournament is the Los Angeles Gladiators. Now, this is the team that won the kickoff clash in the Western region over uh, the San Francisco Shock, though the San Francisco Shock, as I mentioned, got fourth. Uh, Gladiators. We're the team that won the tournament, and they boast the second best record in the Overwatch League at 10 and 2. And thanks to their win in the kickoff class, they sit at 13 points. So, very, very, very good team, this Gladiators roster. They have a lot of the same kind of strengths that the uh, Gladiators have, though, one of the things I would argue about the Gladiators, sorry, that the Shock have, but the Gladiators have a little bit more flexibility to their roster. Uh, the Shock have two flex sport players, right? They have uh, Violet and Kilo, both of whom play. Uh, traditionally, heroes like your Zenyatta, your Ana, your Batiste. Uh, the Gladiators have three support players. Uh, they have Shu and Skewed, who are your kind of traditional flex support players. You know, Ana, Zen, Brig, um, and Batiste. But they also have Funny Astro, who is a, a very, very, very good, one of the best Lucio players in the league. So that is a, a benefit they have. Um, it is a double flex support meta right now, though, so definitely expect uh, a lot of Shu and Skewed in that backline. In the tank role, they have Reiner, um, who has been playing pretty much the entirety of this season. Uh, I think that he is going to be playing a lot, considering the meta recently has been kind of Wrecking Ball. Um, there has been some Sigma, but we've seen uh, Sigma out of him uh, that has been pretty good so far in this most recent tournament cycle. Uh, they did go 6-0 in the qualifiers for the uh, midseason Madness, so they are on a roll right now, have not lost um, since before the Kickoff Clash tournament, actually. So 
Very, very, very good team, the Gladiators roster. Stars to watch out for. Definitely Shu, of course, in that uh, support line. I think Kebster is probably the best player on this team, one of the MVP candidates right now, the MVP frontrunners. He isn't having a great season. I don't think that this is the most talented roster in that DPS line. I think that's probably where they are at their weakest. And I think if you get to a lot of really strong DPS matchups, that could be a place where the Gladiators struggle a bit against some of the other elite uh, teams, like maybe the Shock or even the uh, team we'll talk about next, the Soul Dynasty. But they still are an elite level team and one of the top contenders. And I think that they should still be uh, the kind of Western region um, juggernauts going into this tournament that we saw from them in the kickoff clash. As I just mentioned, the Soul Dynasty is the next team to talk about. They are the three seed going into this tournament. Nine and three record from them coming out of the Eastern region, which all uh, the previous two teams are from the Western region. This is the Eastern region. Uh, fewer teams in the Eastern region, but a very, very, very close group uh, at the top of this region with three teams with a nine and three record. But... Because this whole dynasty were the winners of the kickoff clash in the Eastern region, they netted three additional points, putting them at 12 points. So the um, kind of second highest number of points in the league behind the Shock and Gladiators, both with 13. Oregon should said the third highest points, but I digress. Dynasty, definitely a top level team. They had a five and one uh, qualifier in the midseason madness, losing their final game in the qualifiers. Uh, to the Philadelphia Fusion, who we will talk about as we go on in this video. But the Soul Dynasty are led very, very strongly by two legends of Overwatch, of course, Profit uh, in the DPS role and Smurf in the tank role. And these two have been having incredible seasons. Um, Smurf obviously played for the San Francisco Shock for the past three seasons, where he won two uh, championships in 2019 and 2020. Profit started his career uh, in the Overwatch League with the London Spitfire, uh, won a grand finals there in 2018, uh, and then moved on to the Soul Dynasty, where he has now been, uh, this is his third season with the team. And these two players are playing for, together for the first time, and they look incredible. Uh, you pair that with uh, Fitz and Stalker in the DPS line, who have also been incredible and have really helped kind of uh, play around Profit's strengths, and they are very, very flexible and very, very, very good at their roles. And in the current meta where Sojourn is very, very big, we've seen both of those players um, play at a high level, but Stalker in particular has very much impressed me in that role. And in the support line, they have Vin Dame and they have Creative. Now, Vin Dame is a, a main support player who's been playing a bit of flex support this season, uh, so your Zenyatta especially recently. He's looked pretty good. I don't think he is an elite level uh, Zenyatta player, and it'll be interesting to see how he matches up when you have to go potentially up uh, against teams like the Gladiators or the Shock that do have two flex support players, that that is their comfort role. How will he match up there? That's kind of, for me, the sour point for this team. The thing I'm a little more concerned about is that specific role. He has looked good so far. Will it continue to look as good as we get into this tournament where you're playing all the best teams in the region? I'm not sure. I still think they look like a really good team, obviously, despite the fact that their most recent performance was not a win. But overall, I still think they look like one of the best teams in the region um, or best teams in the league and should be a very, very, very strong contender uh, in this tournament. Moving on to the final team in the top four, we have the Dallas Fuel. They are currently sitting with a 9-3 and three record and 11 points, having gotten second in the kickoff clash in the Western region. This is an interesting team. They started the season, uh, the first tournament cycle, with a 5-1 and one record, um, losing uh, their opening match of the season, but then winning the uh, five next matches, as well as a second-place finish in the kickoff clash. So things looked to be very, very good for this Fuel roster. Um, but they did have a rough patch at the beginning of the Midseason Madness qualifiers, where they dropped two uh, matches to the San Francisco Shock and the Atlanta Reign. Two very good teams, so nothing really to kind of be embarrassed about, but they did not look super strong. They've had some close performances um, against some not-so-great teams, uh, most notably the New York Excelsior, um, who are sitting at the bottom of the Western Region standings right now as one of the bottom three teams. And so the Fuel have looked a little bit shaky going into this tournament, but I think that they have started to kind of adjust and figure out really who they are. I think one of the problems this team has has been they have just struggled to find out which tank player they want in right now. Um, in the kickoff clash, they knew that Hanbin was their best option when he could play that Zarya. This tournament, we're seeing them kind of switch between the Hanbin Sigma and the Fearless Winston. Some series, they'll go more Hanbin. Some series, they'll go more Fearless. Two players incredible in their own right, 
But I think the splitting of time could be a very uh, tough hurdle for them to uh, bypass. They have some very star-level players, though. Obviously, Hamban and Fearless, like I said, both very good players. Uh, in that DPS line, we've seen Sparkle and Edison in particular pop off a lot this season, and those are the two players, I think, to watch out for uh, the most in that DPS line. And I've been very impressed, of course, by Fielder, uh, their flex support player throughout his career. They do have a rookie main support player in Chio, who has been largely successful this season, um, but obviously, like I said, double flex support meta. Uh, how will he stack up against other uh, flex support players? Not quite sure exactly. But I think this is a team that knows their strengths, and they're a very talented roster, and by and large, they can kind of do what they want whenever they want to, because that is just the strengths of this roster. They have the talent, and they're pretty good at what they do. Sometimes they may run into hurdles and walls where teams know how to counter them, uh, but it is not super common just because of how talented this team is top to bottom. So they're definitely a solid team. I think this is where we start to see a bit more of a, a dip in terms of the kind of... Um, overall kind of perception of the teams. I think those first three are really, really, really strong contenders, and I think a lot of people have them very high in their lists. The Fuel, I think, should be a, a strong team in this tournament, but I don't know if I think they're uh, the team to beat by any means going into this tournament. Moving on to the number five seed team, we have the Shanghai Dragons. This team won the 2021 season of the Overwatch League, and they've had a bit of a rough going so far this season. 9-3 record overall. They finished third in the kickoff clash in the Eastern region, uh, losing to the Soul Dynasty in five maps in a very, 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 very good series um, that kind of propelled the Soul Dynasty, of course, to the finals where they were victorious. The Dragons had a bit of a rough patch uh, this season. They, they lost um, two series to the Philadelphia Fusion early, um, lost to the Soul Dynasty in the kickoff clash Um you know, tournament, and then the beginning of this tournament cycle, they struggled uh, against the Soul Dynasty and the Hongjo Spark, two good teams in this region. But they did get their revenge against the Philadelphia Fusion, and they have started to look a lot better. Uh, early in the season, they were doing a lot of experimentation with their roster, playing some of the players who have not been as big a part of this team's success over the past year. Obviously, when they won the tournament, they didn't have uh, Bay Bay in their back line. They didn't have Who Are You starting a lot in that DPS role. They've solidified their core, and they've gone back to what worked for them in the past, um, preferring to run that Lee Jigon Izayaki backline uh, and that Fleta Lip DPS duo that really got them to that championship last year. The tank role, they have been seemingly opting to mostly roll with Fate, who is their main tank player, uh, because Wrecking Ball has been pretty good so far this meta, and so they have opted to go with him over Void, who is another very solid uh, tank player in that off tank role. This Dragons roster, I think, has been getting hot at the right time. They look strong right now. They look very dominant right now. Despite the fact that they are the five seed, I think a lot of people in the community view them as one of the contenders for the title, a top four team potentially in this tournament, despite the fact that their standing does not reflect that necessarily. I've loved what this team has done so far this season. I think they really kind of figured out their identity. They got good at the right time. I think they have all of the makings to be a potential Dark Horse team, though they feel odd to call a Dark Horse team as the defending champions. They still look to be a top-level team right now, and so I would keep my eyes on them if I were you. I think they're the best team playing on that first day of competition, and I think we're going to see some great stuff from them in this tournament. Moving on to the sixth seed, we have the Houston Outlaws, another team with a 9-3 and three record. Uh, this team, 10 points as well, uh, much like the Shanghai Dragons. A lot of tiebreakers here uh, went into this one. It kind of went down to a number of factors like tournament wins and, and whatnot. But this Houston Outlaws team is a very impressive looking team, though I think that there are some people who have some concerns about this team. They have a very, very, very one-dimensional style of play in terms of what compositions they run. They're not a super flexible team. They opt to primarily run Dante, uh, who is normally a DPS player, but they like, like to run him uh, on Doomfist in that tank role. That is really where they have kind of thrived the most this season. They do have a tank player on the role, Piggy, who is a phenomenal player. I had a great season last season, but the team has not looked as good when he is in, and he has flexed to stuff like the Reinhardt and the Sigma. Um, he's traditionally an off-tank player, so stuff like Sigma and D.Va are kind of in his wheelhouse, uh, and he was an incredible Sigma player last season, but this season the team just looks better with Dante in. And I think that's going to ultimately be the biggest problem this Outlaws roster faces, right? We know they have incredibly talented DPS with Pelican and with Merit, who Merit right now statistically is one of the top, if not the top sojourns 
in the league. And Pelican has been having dominant performances all season, even last season, of course, he won Rookie of the Year. Going into this tournament, you have to kind of wonder how much teams will kind of figure them out when they have a, like I said, somewhat one-dimensional play style. I think they got a little lucky this uh, most recent tournament cycle uh, or qualification cycle where they didn't have to play super tough opponents. Um, you know, they played the New York Excelsior and it was a pretty close series. So you have some concern um, about where this team is, but they're still 9-3 and three and they still look pretty solid. I think a big thing is as long as Lastro and Iris, their support line, can kind of play their comfort roles, I think this Outlaws roster will be competitive. And if Dante can get the value that they need out of him on the Doomfist, uh, this is a team to definitely be afraid of uh, just because of how strong Pelican and Merit are in that DPS duo. It'll be interesting to see this team, but I think they have some really strong potential to maybe upset a couple things and make some surprises um, uh, happen for this team. The number seven seed is the Hong Joe Spark, another team at nine and three, and actually with a better differential than both the Shanghai Dragons and the Houston Outlaws. Uh, however, a disappointing kickoff clash appearance from them, where they didn't win a game, uh, puts them here below both the Dragons and the Outlaws. The Spark are an interesting team to watch. They definitely have some stars on this team. Uh, Shy in the DPS role is one of the best hit scan players we have in this league. Uh, he is incredibly talented. His Ash and his Sojourn this season have both been incredible. And the rookie Alpha Yi on his opposite, of course, the other uh, DPS player, has been looking exceptional as well. When this team is at their best, they look very, very good. The problem with this team is they have not had great tournament performances throughout their history. Uh, they did make the uh, a tournament finals back in 2020. It was the final one, and they really just kind of had the easy side of the bracket. When they made the finals, they got uh, rolled pretty heavily. They've made some coaching changes and some personnel changes over time, but by and large, this Spark roster has not kind of lived up to their potential when playoffs come around. I've liked what they've done so far with their um, tank line. They, they've predominantly played Bernard, who is an off-tank player who's looked exceptional this season. I think he's been very, very good for them. Um, but occasionally, they'll sub in Gouchoué, um, who is their main tank player, if they really want to play something like Winston. Their support line is very solid and very consistent. Uh, it is just the two players they have on that roster, which is Irony and Super Rich. I love that. I think the consistency of this roster is one of the things that they've done well. Um, in their past, they did a lot of subbing out and switching of players, which I think kind of hurts some of the uh, consistency and uh, synergy that your roster has. But the Spark have done a very good job keeping that synergy together um, and making this kind of mixed Chinese and Korean roster work pretty well. Uh, I think they're going to be an interesting team to watch. I think they have a pretty tough opening match going up against the Philadelphia Fusion. But... I do like what the Spark roster has done, and if they can play up to the potential that we've seen from them at points uh, this season, they could definitely make a pretty decent run in this tournament, even competing with some of those top teams in the region. Next, we have our number eight seed, which is the London Spitfire. Interestingly, this Spitfire team is the only team in this tournament that did not play in the kickoff clash they were just outside of the kickoff clash qualifiers, but a 5-1 and one tournament run from them in the midseason madness gets them here uh, into this with an 8-4 and four record. This is a team that predominantly has played Reinhardt Rush compositions. That has been their bread and butter so far this season, and they look very good at it. Uh, but they have also shown um, flexibility, of course, subbing out Hottie for Poco at times uh, in that tank role, uh, and they have looked very good with him in as well. They've shown a lot of really good potential as well with their DPS line. Uh, it We see a lot of uh, Sparker, of course, who is probably the best uh, player on this roster right now. But also Shax, who is a very, very, very good and high-level Tracer player. And Backbone, who has played a lot of very good uh, flex DPS. As well, at times, subbing in for that flex support role alongside Landon, uh, who is their primary flex support player. They also have... Um, Admiral in the support role, the main support role, and he has played very well as well. It's an interesting team. This is the only full Western roster uh, in this tournament. There's a couple other rosters that are predominantly Western, but this is the only one that is all Western, um, pretty much all European roster here from the uh, London Spitfire. They look pretty good. I think they're an interesting team, like I said. Um, they were 5-1, and one, playing a lot of weaker competition when they played against the Dallas Fuel. Um, the Fuel kind of outclassed them quite a bit. So I think the Spitfire... Definitely, record-wise, maybe a little bit deceiving because their uh, tournament qualifiers this time around were not the toughest in the world. 
but I still think they have a lot of potential and could be a very, very solid team in this tournament, um, especially if this kind of Reinhardt Rush-based composition uh, that we've seen quite a bit in North America, uh, we haven't seen as much in the Eastern region or APAC region, so very real potential for the Spitfire to kind of surprise some teams with that. Uh, but I think they're going to be an interesting team to watch because they're just difficult to place because their play style is pretty different from a lot of other teams, and we don't know exactly what they will do in the tournament proper. Next, we have the number nine seed, which is the Atlanta Rain. They will play the London Spitfire in round one. And the Rain are an interesting team, of course, uh, finishing second in the 2021 season uh, in the grand finals, as well as third in the kickoff clash tournament for the Western region, uh, knocking off the San Francisco Shock in a somewhat dominant 3-1 fashion during that tournament run. They've had a bit of a rough patch in the midseason madness uh, with some not so great play. Uh, at times. However, this is a team that I think really takes their game to the next level. Uh, when tournament matches come around, they kind of know that those are the games that matter more. And when you have elite level players on your roster, like Kai in that DPS role, uh, as well as Hawk in that tank role, and two incredible support players with OG and Ultraviolet, this team is pretty much borderline uh, an elite level team and could very easily have a very, very nice run in this tournament. They're the, you know, top of the bottom four seeds, but I think that they are arguably better than even teams like the Spitfire and maybe even the Hangzhou Spark. I've been very impressed by the rain when they play at their best this season. I think we'll see a lot of Venom as that second DPS player, a lot of Tracer so far this tournament, but occasionally we'll see Nero come in uh, for some of those other flex DPS roles. Definitely a very interesting team and a very good team to watch. Um... But like I said, they've stumbled a bit, 7-5 and five record going into this tournament cycle. Certainly a, a team that I think has, has lost some games. They probably shouldn't have a team whose record should probably be a little bit better. But I think, like I said, when tournament time comes around, the Rain usually step it up and play their best Overwatch. And so I kind of expect the same thing to come out of them for this one. The 10 seed is the Philadelphia Fusion, who I have mentioned multiple times throughout this video. They are a 6-6 six and six team who finished second place in the kickoff clash in the eastern region, so they are an 8-point team as a result. And this fusion roster is scary, scary good. Yes, they are a 6-6 six and six team. They are very inconsistent, especially in the regular season. But when we saw them play in the kickoff clash, they were a very strong team, only bested by the very exceptional Soul Dynasty. So the Philadelphia Fusion, definitely a team to watch out for. It was a gargantuan performance from the rookie DPS player MN3 that put them over the Soul Dynasty, um, you know, in their mat last matchup. And I think that that is the kind of player to really watch for. If MN3 is able to have those kind of high-level carry performances on a regular basis, this Fusion roster will be an elite roster. They are good. They are strong. They have a lot of potential to be one of the best teams, and if not the best team, uh, coming out of the Eastern region for this tournament. But like I said, they've been inconsistent, and this team is almost entirely made up of rookies. Really only three veteran players on this roster uh, with Carpe, uh, Fury, and Aim God. So they're an interesting team to watch. They tend to play almost all of their rookies. Um, and so definitely some concern there. They're a cursed roster, a cursed franchise that has never won a tournament despite some of the you know, most successful uh, seasons in Overwatch League history. So a very interesting team to kind of keep your eyes on for this one. Definitely a dark horse candidate for the season uh, for this tournament based on what we've seen from them, but it's going to be a very interesting climb for them to see how well they can do when this tournament actually kicks off. Next is the 11 seed, the Florida Mayhem. This is an interesting roster because this roster is a mixed roster with a very kind of ragtag feel to it, the kind of perpetual underdog feeling to it. This is a team that was very heavily scouted. A lot of players from different corners of the world, some players from Korea, some players from the Middle East, some players from North America, from Europe. Definitely an interesting roster here uh, that the Florida Mayhem have kind of uh, assembled. And this team uh, has been decent all season. But they haven't really had any of those really great performances against some of your top-level teams where you feel confident in them to kind of get an upset against some of these really good teams like your Gladiators, your Shock, your Dragons. 
there are, there are definitely some weaknesses there uh, with this Mayhem team that make me a little bit hesitant to think this team has a really, really, really uh, kind of strong puncher's chance at a very deep tournament run. If they are going to have one of those runs, it will certainly be on the back of some of their star DPS players. XE has been very, very good for them this season, as has Hydron when he gets the chance to play. I think he uh, has had a very good season. I think if this team plays to their strengths and picks maps that benefit them, they could be threatening to everybody. They make a lot of mistakes, I think, in terms of kind of positioning. Sometimes uh, some of their players play it too aggressive and get picked out um, or picked off as a result and kind of singled out and, and taken down. If they clean up their play, I think they certainly are an elite level team, but I think it's going to be some time before we see this team kind of reach those really, really high highs. But I would not be surprised if they won a, a round one match, if they won with an upset game, because I think they have a lot of potential. And I think when they're at their peak and they're at their best, they can compete with some of the top teams in the league um, and definitely some of those middle uh, of the pack teams uh, in that five through uh, eight range. I think this Mayhem roster can compete with those teams. Most definitely. Final team in the tournament is the 12 seed, the Toronto Defiant. I think this team is probably the weakest team in the tournament, uh, not even just by record, uh, but also just by the performances we've seen from them. They have had a very rocky kind of season. Uh, they did have a head coaching change that they made in between the kickoff clash and the midseason madness. So the team has kind of been trying to play around that for a little while now. They've definitely had some of their moments, and they are definitely uh, in good hands in that DPS role when they have a star like Hisu, who has had a very good season so far this season, uh, as well as Finale, who I think has looked good as well in that DPS role. They have some stars as well in that uh, support line with Chorong and Twilight, who are heralded as some of the best supports in the game, but we haven't necessarily seen uh, that high-level performance from them. I think the biggest issue with this team right now is their tank line has not looked as strong as I think most people thought it would uh, going into the season when you have two names that everybody was very, very high on with Chorong and Twi uh, Twilight. Uh, and that support line, of course, the, the tank line, uh, however, with Hotba and Muse has not really looked uh, what people thought it might. Kind of a safe bet going with those two players. Neither of them are wow factor tanks. And we haven't really seen that wow factor from them because it's not really what they've been in their careers. So this team is a team that's going to essentially be really heavily relying on some of those elite talent. Um, predominantly, Hisu has had a lot of impact on this roster so far. I think this is definitely a team that deserves to be at this tournament. I think that they are a top 12 team in the league right now, um, but they certainly have a very uphill battle to climb. Uh, especially opening up against the Shanghai Dragons, a team who they've actually never lost to historically. So that could be an interesting one there. But definitely uh, a team that has some potential, but I think they are going to be struggling to find a footing against a lot of these elite level teams that have made it to this tournament. But like I said, with players like Hisu at the helm, they definitely have the potential for a nice deep run. So those are all 12 of your teams playing in next week's Mid-Season Madness. There's your little bit of information in case you are someone who has not followed along or someone who has followed along and just kind of wants to know my thoughts on all the teams and what to kind of look out for with each of the teams. There you go. That is that. I want to thank you all so much for watching. Uh, this is a bit of a long one, but if you enjoyed it, like I said in the beginning of the video, let me know in the comments down below so I know to make more stuff like this in the future uh, for other tournaments. But that's going to be all for me for today. Thank you all once again. Hope you're all staying safe and staying healthy. And until next time, bye-bye.